Hi everyone, this is Jane Lambert at A New Dawn Training and I'm happy to be you again today. I hope that you are coping. A number of people that I speak to unfortunately aren't and what's become quite apparent is that people are grieving. Hi Danielle, nice to see you. People are almost grieving for what they can't do. They are mourning, mourning the loss of hugs with family, mourning the, mourning the loss of a coffee or a glass of wine with a friend. And mourning and grief occur as a response to almost the death of what they see as the death of part of their lives. Hi Karen. Now, grief in any aspect, whether it be a, 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 an illness or the death of a loved one, or as people are seeing the, the lockdown at the moment, they are seeing grief as what they are being denied. And I think that that is quite apparent because stage one of grief is denial and isolation. So we oh. have hit that straight on the head. We also then feel anger. We get, hi Michelle, we get angry about not being able to do what we feel we should be able to do. And that can be handled in numerous different ways. But unfortunately, where lockdown's concerned, if you are being antagonized and irritated by someone that you are sharing your home with, that's not a positive way to be. Now, as time goes on, and we're now in our sixth week, we could be moving into the bargaining stage of grief, where we've heard that some countries are actually starting to lift their restrictions now in certain ways. One country's let children go back to school. One country has let small shops open now. Hi Di. And what happens is we are almost bargaining with ourselves wondering what our government is going to do. None of us can guess. We have no idea what is going to be the decision for us over the coming weeks and because we're out of control none of that is within our control we get quite depressed and that's where sadness and regret comes in sadness that we can't see who we want to see regret that the last time we saw somebody we might have had a crossword with them and then there's has to be the fifth stage of grief which is acceptance we have to accept what is happening and hi carol hi debbie we have to be able to tell ourselves this is going to pass now one of the ways that we can do it is to think about how we are relating to the situation that we're finding ourselves in and the logical levels of change are different for everyone. Hi Nathan. Each level provides different information to help us understand what is going on. And each level is connected to the next and it brings clarity for us. Each level that we use highlights where we need to work and it highlights what we need to achieve and assists us in helping us identify where our problem is coming from. And we all know what the problem is. The problem is the virus that's out there. So initially, we need to look at our environment. Physically, where do we need to be? We need to be where we are safe. When do we need to be there? Most of the time. And who with? 
with the people who are nearest and dearest to us unless we are key workers and then you'll hear key workers talk about their work their work family and that's because they have that same connection with their work family as they do with their home family i.e everybody's looking out for each other then we need to look at our behavior our actions and we have to be specific what are we doing on a daily basis are you still talking to each other about being stuck in the house or actually have you moved on to this acceptance stage of we're safe in the house your this is all your choice you may think that you have no choice but actually you do your choice is about what you can choose to do how you can choose to act so you can take your daily walk your daily exercise whether it be a cycle ride or a run whether you go out with your children or you go out with your dogs or whether you go out alone and just have a, a walk but that is part of the behavior that is within your control it's within your control what you eat when you eat what you're drinking when you drink so try and get rid of this negative thought process that everything is out of my control because it's not next I'd like you to look at your capabilities so what knowledge what skills or talents do you have at the moment that are helping you cope with our situation for some people it's about keeping constantly busy but actually that can be quite exhausting if you are attempting to fill every second of every day so cut yourself some slack be prepared to have a few days where you actually sit and watch a film you read your book you work your way through your music collection Think about the knowledge that you have to cope. We know what we are supposed to do if we have to go, for example, to the shops, to the petrol station. So do what we know we should do. What skills or talents do we have that will help us cope with this? Some of us have coping strategies that have clicked in almost immediately for me it was about right i was going to make the most of all that fabulous weather we'd had and i did that by painting in the garden that meant that there's less for my husband to do because he is still working full time it was also about for me knowing that i can make sure that we're eating properly some of you have, may have seen that, that a bake, and although a bake, yes, they last us a while and they have been spread through other people as well, by to other people. So it's not all just for us. When you think about the knowledge that you've got and the skills you have and the talents that you have for coping, and all of you have some, how are you actually using them at the moment? What are you doing? I know that some friends of mine have actually not been coping too well at all. They are quite social butterflies. And so even if it's only once every couple of weeks, I'm making some phone calls, I'm making some video calls. Other people, because of what I do, think I'm perfectly okay. And that's, that's good too. Then I want you to look at what your beliefs and your values are. What do you believe to be true at a deeper level about this situation? And why? Why do you believe this? Maybe you are someone who believes in some of the conspiracy theories 
maybe you are somebody that despite what I say, which is try not to watch the, the news all the time, maybe you're someone who actually feels comforted by the news and is glad that they're staying in all the time because the death number is going up. So you have to be true to yourself at a deep level and think, right, am I looking after myself to the best of my ability? Whilst for some, this is about keeping fit and still staying active. And by all means, we all need to be doing that. I've been out for an hour with my dogs this morning. But maybe this isn't the time to be beating yourself up about having a piece of cake with your morning coffee every day. On a more positive note, it's about identifying what it is and why you believe what you believe. Take the time for yourself. Take the time to see what you believe, see what you value. If nothing else, now's the time. Morning, Sam. Now's the time to concentrate on the things that truly matter. Because I think it's becoming, as a whole, less materialistic. And for that, identify who you are. And I don't mean, are you Joe Bloggs? Are you Jane Doe? I mean, who are you as a person? Are you someone that cares for others? One of my clients has been absolutely brilliant. Hi, Amy. She's been absolutely brilliant about taking care of some elderly people in her road who have no family nearby so they can't nip round with any shopping. So are you someone who's caring for others? How do you describe yourself? As a person, what are you like? How do you express yourself? What's your vocabulary like? Are you, are you someone that is quite good at putting things into words? Or do you find that you, you struggle with that, but actually you can express yourself in many other ways, whether it be through art or music? And I think the thing that's happened most is people are missing their purpose. If your purpose has been to run a gym, it's been to have your own business, which at the minute is on hold, you may feel like you've lost your purpose. And actually then, what do you want to achieve? Because on a daily level, it may feel like you've got very little. So if you haven't already done that, start and think about the emphasis. Are you telling yourself, I can't do it now? I can't run my business now. If you're saying it's, I can't, it's about your identity. Are you saying, I can't, and then the emphasis is on your belief? Are you saying, I can't do it, then the emphasis is on your capability? Are you saying, I can't do it, then the emphasis is on your behaviour? Or is the emphasis on, I can't do it now, and the emphasis is on your environment? Think about this. Logical levels of change are there for everybody. And you already know how crucial it is to set goals. I've had a number of people say they're finding it quite a struggle to have a boundary around their day so their sleep patterns are all out of sync. And that's because they're not getting up in the morning or they're staying in the pyjamas till lunchtime or they're perhaps just not getting dressed at all. And as I was on, on the dog walks, it's it's um, dustbin day for us. And a lady came running out of her front door in her pyjamas 
screaming over her shoulder at her children to get dressed and have some breakfast. But she's in her pyjamas, so her kids are copying their mum. So think about your goals. They don't have to be massive at the moment, but we all need daily goals. It doesn't matter who it's for as long as it makes you feel better. So if a daily goal for you is a dance around the kitchen, do it. If a daily goal for you is to have your favourite music on, play it. If a daily goal for you is to get up, get washed, get dressed and to do some decluttering, some cleaning, do it. How great would it be to come out of the other side of this lockdown having had a thorough review on where you are, how far you've come in your journey, what you've achieved and what you've learned, both about yourself and about your environment. One of the things that's really good is to think about all the great stuff you've done so far. It may feel like it's something quite tiny, but you will have had great results. What was your focus? What actions did you take? What personal qualities did you draw on to achieve success that you've had? What strengths did you draw upon? Who else was involved in your success? What qualities did they bring into the situation and in what what other areas or situations can you use the strategy that you've come across because as we move forward through life you can bet your bottom dollar they're all going to be there again now already you will have seen that there is some not so good stuff and I want you to think about what your focus was then maybe you felt like you didn't have one what actions did you take? What did you fail to notice at the time? It's very easy to miss things when we're getting quite wound up. What could you have done differently? What got in the way of your success? What in your heart of hearts really stopped you succeeding? So what are you going to do next time? Next time it feels like a proverbial bad day, or as one of my colleagues said, a crap week. Look carefully at that, that phrase. Was it really for 24 hours a day, seven days, that things were a bit rubbish? Because we will have more control and greater ability in the future to overcome challenges when they happen, if we start and think about it, we've got to look forward now. We've got to think what is our life going to be like after this all calms down? What's after lockdown going to deliver for us? So make a plan, take control. Just this week, just today, Today would be a good day to start. I know what time it is. It's almost 20 past 12. You might think, oh, Jane, it's not worth it. Half of today is gone. But actually, I want you to think about what you want. We could be in lockdown for many weeks yet. So think about the actions you need to take to achieve a positive result by the end of it. And I love this process. I would like you to find five minutes. Get a notebook and think about what your aims are for the next few weeks. Hi, Sally. I want you to think about whether your aims are financial, personal, social or business and write them down. And if you want 
some help with goal setting, please get in touch. I'm only too, helpy, too happy to help you do that. But well-defined goals are vital in all elements of our lives. So the following process is one that I use personally. And I work through the questions and I remember that if you like, the initial responses usually are most useful. So what specifically do you want out of life over the next few weeks? I've almost finished painting the whole of the fence, except for the kickboards at the bottom. And now the weather's turned. I know that that's got to just go. It's just got to sit there until after. And I'm being quite specific. The only thing I can't tick as far as a smart goal is there is the time because I am stopped by the weather. So if I'm going to focus on something else, it's about making sure that I get the rest that I need. One of the things that I do is go at things with gusto. But then I tire myself out because I my day starts very early in the morning and it feel, finishes very late at night and I don't take a lot of breaks in, in between. So I have to positively think, right, what do I want? Not what do I not want? So when you look at your goals, take each goal through the following questions. Look at the evidence. What would your evidence be that you have achieved your goal? How would you know if you're getting it? What would you be doing to get it? What would you be seeing, hearing or feeling? And what would be a demonstration of it? So for me, if I just focused on the fence, it's literally just the kickboards all the way around the garden. And I'll know because I'm painting it lavender. That's the colour that we've got lots of. So that's what colour it's going to be. Look at the specifics of the goal. Where do you want it? Where do you not want it? We have to look at both sides of that. When do you want this goal? And with who do you want it or with whom? What actions are you willing to take? What resources can you activate to get this goal? We are great at thinking we don't have any resources at our disposal, but we do. Hi, Martin. What can you do? What can you continue to do? More importantly, what do you need to stop doing? Look to the future now. Look to the winter, the autumn. What will happen in your future if you get this goal? How will getting this goal affect other aspects of your life? How does it benefit you? What might you lose if you get it? And all of these questions will help you define your goals and give you some motivation or even a framework to achieve them. Now, I would always say, bearing in mind that research on goal setting concludes that your goal setting is more effective if you take action immediately. So if you've got something that you're thinking of doing, have a go, write it down, tell someone, a partner, a supportive friend, a colleague or a mentor what those goals are and regularly update that person on the progress to achieving the goals that you set yourselves. If you don't do that, you know you're not going to get there. And I read more and more these days about how happiness boosts success. Some research say that happier people make more money. 
that would be quite an interesting way of contemplating whether or not you're making what you feel you're worth. But I reckon there are quite a few people who would be very happy if they could generate 37% more money into their lives. Except it doesn't always work like that now, does it? It's no good somebody who sells something saying, when I sell loads more, I'm going to be happy. When I hit that sales target, I'm going to feel great. Because it's going to be a mini high, but actually mini highs quickly fade. It works like this. To be great at selling, you need to generate a positive happiness mindset first. Harvard calls it the happiness advantage. Do you have it? So now you could be thinking, well, I happily go and buy that, but actually it's not that simple, but neither is it that difficult. So what can you personally do to improve your happiness levels? Know what's expected of you. If you or someone in your house is still working, find out what's expected of them. Do they use their talents every day? Do you use yours in running the house? Are you receiving recognition or praise for what you're doing? Do you know that somebody cares about you? Do you have the opportunity to learn and grow? Is anybody listening if you have an idea? You notice I've not mentioned pay there. Little measures cost very little. But what can you do to increase your happiness over the next few days? Train your brain in the way that Sam and Zoe and Nathan and Chrissy exercise their bodies and their other muscles. Even seasoned adults can develop a new habit and ultimately they rewire their brains. You can influence your personal in a level of happiness by the same example of habits that you actually cultivate, how you interact, how you manage stress. There's a lot of research on the importance of happiness, which is thankfully taking us from a debate. And there is a serious contribution now to corporate policy. I was struck by research conducted by Sean Acker at Harvard, who concluded that, sorry, who concluded that engaging in one brief positive exercise every day for as little as 21 days, that's three weeks, has a lasting impact. So do me a favour, try it. Choose one of the following five activities and try it every day for the next three weeks. So every day, number one, you could jot down three things you are grateful for. Number two, write a positive message to someone in your social support network. That could be your family, your friend. Number three, meditate for two minutes. If you've never done it, there are a multitude of meditation videos and music on YouTube. Exercise. It doesn't have to be for several hours. But if you exercise, you're going to feel better. And number five is take two minutes to describe in your diary or your journal the most meaningful experience in the last 24 hours. You perform your chosen activity every day for three weeks and if you achieve the results that Sean Acker achieved with this group, 
you'll become significantly happier. And more importantly, you'll stay that way for months after you start doing the exercise. But why stop? If you're feeling better, let's keep going. So let's try it. I hope that you have found today positive. Whether you have or whether you haven't, please give me some feedback. If it's not been useful to you, that is as, is as important to me as being told that it is. And I hope that you have a great few days. And I'll see you again on Monday. I'm live at 8pm. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.